slow. What a beautiful day. What a beautiful day. My gosh. Amazing planet we live on, isn't it? <coughs> it's so still. Real stillness. There are my crows. The crows, I have crows who live in the neighborhood. I've kind of gotten to know they're quite comfortable with me. <laughs> and uh, uh, squirrels who are also quite comfortable. And magpies. Listen to them. Okay, you guys. I wrote a little note. I, could, I try to, I don't always sit down to do these things. And, and what, uh, you know, what do I say? I, I never know what I'm going to say. And I just wanted to, I, here's, here it is. Here it is. So the mind, your mind, that you, we were taught that we needed to rely on. <coughs> and we were kind of taught in a way that either you were smart or you weren't. And if you weren't, then, you know, you kind of had to do a certain job in life. If you were smarter, you could do another job in life. And, and uh, everything was around what you were going to do to make a living based on, on you know, what they told you, whether you were smart enough or, or had the ability to do or, or uh, uh, passion for. It. And, uh, uh, but all, all from the mind, generally, you know. And, and uh, so if, you're, if your dad was a carpenter, sometimes you became a carpenter if your dad was a salesman or your salesman, you know, you became a salesperson and, and, uh, and that's often how we determined, you know, our, our life path, you know, if our parents were divorced, we got divorced and, and uh, um, pretty simple, isn't it? You know, I'm uh, almost predictable in, in some ways when we're living from the mind. Because the mind has already, it's like, like an engine has a governor on it that will only allow it to go to a certain speed. And the mind has a, um, a limitations built in, it seems, from, from our conditioning that tells us we can only do a certain thing. And, and uh, um, so, or be <coughs> a certain way. And there's uh, certainly uh, not a lot of conversation uh, in, in most of our youth about what we are going to, uh, you know, our, our spiritual experience. And, and uh, <coughs> at least uh, uh, it seemed that way. It doesn't mean that we didn't get a religious training because, uh, you know, I certainly did. My, my mother was, uh, was very um, uh, avid uh, Christian and, and, you know, and drug us around to a, a number of different uh, belief systems, or, you know, in the Christian faith. Uh, we did a bunch of, we started out uh, in the Anglican Church, which was interesting, and then ended up, I think, in the Pentecost. <laughs> so we moved around, you know, and, and uh, so, but not really um, with an idea towards um, discovering who we really were, self actualization um, the there wasn't much in that area like um, Maslow some of you have heard of Maslow and he talks about the the, the uh, self-actualization as the top of the pyramid in in uh, uh, in, in our experience here and uh, um, you know self-actualization or you know total awareness of our oneness with the universe uh, is is what we're talking about. What that's my you know what my search has been most of my life, if not all of my life. And and uh, and then when the discoveries came, um, when the stu discoveries came, the uh, there weren't even discoveries. How were they? When the realization came that 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 God was not separate from me, that that the universe, everything was one. And I had seen it uh, 
in, in uh, I had actually seen it in my youth doing acid. <laughs> I had just like, oh my gosh, everything's the same. And had, uh, had, you know, some amazing experiences of it before I stopped doing drugs and alcohol. And, uh, but I didn't connect. Uh, it didn't connect for me. I didn't understand. And, and then it, as in later years, as I would have these kind of like spiritual, um, mystical almost experiences, I would uh, equate them to my, you know, what it was like when I was a kid doing, doing acid, LSD. So... <laughs> so anyway, the, it seems that the mind holds the key to our our surrender of who we uh, um, have been conditioned to believe that we are, and uh, and and so and the mind is what we're going to surrender. So how do we get past the mind if the mind holds the key to our jail? How do we get past the mind? Well, we, we, I guess we, we can romance it a bit, right? We can romance it a bit. Remember, the mind is doing a pretty good job. It's doing the best job it can based on, on uh, the information it was given. So, um, but we, we want to get to a place where we're, where we're free, where we're, we feel the stillness, where we, we, we experience the oneness. And, and uh, um, this thing, whether we know it or not, that most of us have been searching for most of our life, you know, and um, pretending that we know what's going on in life and inside having this nagging feeling that something's missing, you know, and, and that we're not connected. And um, so this is the, the dilemma, how to come past the mind. And the first step in that, I believe, is to be aware that the mind, although it's doing the best it can, can't be trusted. It can't be trusted. Because generally, it, it's trying to... Um, the mind is, is, is always kind of putting itself first. It's in a selfish mode. So it's, it's, it has fear. And, and, uh, uh, and the fear is what keeps us in this old place. You know, and so the, the, how do we get past this fearful mind, this self-centered mind, this selfish mind, to uh, a place of bliss and love and awareness? So, <clears throat> some might say through practice, you know, and, and I won't deny that, you know, years of meditation can be helpful. And uh, I believe that that's fact through uh, study. And I also... Uh, will agree that study, years of study, can be helpful. And, and uh, um, you know, re reading, like this book we're going to read in a couple of weeks, the Bhagavad Gita. We're going to uh, read this together. Hopefully you guys get a copy, Stephen Mitchell's copy. We're going to do this, you know. These things are, are helpful, you know, serving and helping others, you know, getting out of ourselves. These things are helpful, you know. Um, Becoming self-aware, you know, so when fear comes up, we see it and we, we ask it to leave. Not angrily, but we just ask it to leave. When resentment, when judgment comes up, we ask it to leave. We become more conscious of ourselves, you know. So when complaint comes up, you know, we see it and ask it to leave. When, when desire comes up, there's a difference between a preference, you know, a, uh, and a strong desire. And just... We get caught sometimes in, in this wanting. And the wanting keeps us from being. You know, we're again stuck in a, in a, in a place. So uh, those are all part of the recipe of, of, of surrender. And, and, uh, but ultimately, knowing that the mind has the key to the jail we live in because we live in the jail of the mind. And... and uh, We got a helicopter. What a beautiful day! My gosh, it's just so gorgeous. Hmm. So that, that's a little bit of it. And, and uh, you know, there, over and over again, we're really talking about the same thing over and over again. And, and uh, freedom is is here for all of us. True freedom is here for all of us. It doesn't matter how old we are. 
you know, we have these belief systems that we have to have stuff. We have to have, uh, you know, a house. We have to have all of these things. And, and uh, it doesn't really matter, I'm telling you. If you have nothing, it doesn't matter. This freedom is what it's about. It, it, you know, everything will be added on to us. It says, seek ye first this kingdom of heaven. They call it the kingdom of heaven, but it's within us. The kingdom of heaven was, is within us, and, and it's not outside. It's, you know, and, and, and the way through the mind is to surrender the mind. The mind wants to understand. Just say thank you, you know, and let it go. Say thank you and let it go. There is no understanding of this oneness. The mind doesn't. The mind doesn't come into it. It can't be. It can't be held in the mind. It's beyond the mind. So. That's it. <laughs> I'm going to read a little bit today, like I do regularly. I think we're on uh, September 21st, and. Uh, um, this little book that I've been reading from, for you guys and for me, because uh, it's amazing for me as well. Uh, so, and it has stuff. Some I don't always agree. He, this man wrote this book in 1954, so I don't always agree with everything in the way he wrote it. But his his intention is good. He's trying to open the door, you know, from his perspective. Uh, and the door, of course, is the door to this freedom, to this living. You know, a life of, of uh, intuition, living a life of free from fear, a life of service, a life of love. And um, so his intention is very good. Sometimes um, I, you know, I, I rewrite a bit. 1954 and his, his awareness were, were, were where they were. This beautiful little book called 24 Hours a Day. 24 Hours a Day. And... Uh, Ah, the beauties of living in the city. The, I think it's the police helicopter. God bless them. Everyone. Okay. I'm going to read this while he's going. Uh, can you guys hear that helicopter? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. It says, let us continue with steps four, five, six, seven, and ten. So he's going over the steps in the, in the 12 steps in, in the last three or four days he's been referring to the steps and it says in taking a personal inventory of ourselves we have to face facts as they really are we have to stop running away and that is the deal we must face reality we must see ourselves as we really are we must admit our faults openly and try to correct them well it my, my, again I, I'm not one for correcting faults. I'm one for surrendering faults. And uh, in step six and seven, it doesn't talk about correcting. It actually talks about just allowing them to to melt away, uh, because we we begin to focus on love and service. And uh, when we're focusing on love and service, uh, our character defects or, or our faults uh, melt away. Mm. I have a new coffee cup. I love it. Okay. We must admit our faults and uh, allow them to be corrected. We must uh, see where we have been dishonest, where we have been impure, selfish, and unloving. We do not do this once and forget it. We do it every day of our lives, as long as we live. We are never done with checking up on ourselves. So step 10 is a daily inventory. My Dairy inventory. It's a beautiful thing. Meditation for the day. In improving our personal lives, we have unseen help, it says. We're, we were not made so that we were not made so that we could see God. We were not made so that we could see God. So this is the thing that the mind wants to understand, eh? And he's addressing it here. Um, that would be too easy for us. And uh, there would be no merit in, in uh, living a God-centered life. Uh, it takes an act of faith, a venture of belief, to realize the unseen power. So this is it, self-realization, to realize the unseen power. Yet, we have much evidence of God's existence in the strength that many people have received 
from the act of faith, the venture of belief. We see neither our souls, we, we, we can see neither our souls nor God. God and the human spirit are both outside the limitation of space and time. That's right, because they are now, now, right now. Yet the unseen health is effective here and now. There, it, this has been proved in thousands of changed lives. <coughs> he's, he's got it. He's got it. Prayer for the day. I pray that I may make the great venture of belief. I pray that my vision may not be blocked by internal pride. Sweet, eh? So he, it's, a, it's a great little reading and it's a reminder, you know, the, really vigilance, vigilance, vigilance is, is, a, is, an, is important, you know. That's why in the 12-step world we go to a lot of meetings. We're often, you know, if not always, we're, we're often, uh, well, always we're ready to help. You know, my prayer every day is, is uh, guide me and strengthen me, show me, help me to be, thy will be done, thy will be done, thy will be done. You know, so how can I help? How can I be of service? There, there is no other way for me to live. Uh, I have tried, you know, and spent years trying to uh, fill my own cup. And now if I help others fill theirs, mine is always full, always. So nothing's missing in this moment. Nothing is missing. So that's it. And, and uh, the other prayer is a never-ending prayer of gratitude. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Just say it. It doesn't matter where you are, sitting in traffic. It doesn't matter, you know, what your situation is in your home or if somebody's sick. And it's just thank you. Continuous thank you. It doesn't have to be for anything in particular. Just thank you. And gratitude just emanates from us. And it lifts the world. <laughs> I told me, yes, you left your sunglasses here. <laughs> I can't see the writing on my little phone today because the sun is coming in, but I can just see your note. Yes, your sunglasses are here. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, see you tonight. Tonight's meditation night, you guys. Hopefully uh, you can uh, join us. We're going to be online on uh, um you know, Zoom, and we're going to be online on the, you know Facebook Live, and we're going to be online on YouTube, and uh, maybe even LinkedIn. I'm trying to get that organized. So, um, so yeah, Facebook, uh, YouTube, and uh, tonight, Monday nights, love to have you, you, you drop in. And there's room for people to come and be at the house. We're keeping it limited, you know, maximum 10 or 12, but last week we had seven. It was obvious that we had more room if we wanted it. And, you know, don't come if you're not feeling well. Uh, and, and all of those things, you know, the questions. And it, you're welcome to wear a mask if you'd like. And uh, uh, so at, we start at 7.30 sharp, so be here before that. You know, this is the thing. If we're with like-minded people, if you will, uh, excuse the pun, who are recognizing that we can live outside of that in, in this. We already are actually living outside of it. We can become aware of that and live in the bliss of that. That's uh, being with together and, and uh, um, is, is good, encouraging, you know. And, and uh, so I encourage you to come. And, and be with us and be in, on this journey of awakening and, and uh, uh, being the love that we are. Okay. Love you guys. See you tonight. And uh, I think that's it. <laughs> okay. Bye.